I call this piece Turkey's Extended Emergency. Now, an emergency, the Oxford English Dictionary informs us, is, quote, a sudden state of danger requiring immediate action, unquote. Uh, but uh, Turkish citizens have been living in a state of emergency for a year and a half. And on the 8th of January, just a few weeks ago, Deputy Prime Minister Bekir Bozdag announced that the government intended to extend it. Uh, this represents the sixth such extension, and Turks might be excused for starting to forget just what normal life feels like. Now, the facts and the reasons leading to the original declaration of a state of emergency might be precisely what the Turkish president, uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, and his government declared at the time. A conspiracy theories, however, are easy to hatch, and um, alternative explanations continue to be propounded. On the 15th of July, 2016, just before 11 p.m., military jets were seen flying over Ankara, and a group of Turkish soldiers took over several installations there and in Istanbul. During subsequent encounters between the insurrectionists and national forces, 250 people were killed and some 2,200 injured. This thwarted coup d'etat was a judged ample uh, justification for the imposition of a state of emergency on the Turkish nation on July the 20th. Now, at this time, Erdogan had been Turkey's president for two years, but had made no secret of his determination to transform the office, which traditionally was simply a ceremonial one, into that of a political supremo. And uh, in the June 2015 general elections, the party he leads, the AKP, made the creation of a, uh, an executive presidency central to its um, campaign strategy. The idea was to enhance the presidential role to a nearly all-powerful position as head of government, head of state, and head of the ruling party. The office of prime minister would disappear. Uh, the president would have the power to appoint cabinet ministers, propose budgets, uh, and appoint more than half the members of the nation's highest uh, judicial body. The president would also have the power to dissolve the National Assembly and uh, significantly, perhaps, uh, impose states of emergency. The timetable for accomplishing um, this constitutional change or revision uh, envisaged its passage through Parliament by the end of 2016 and a popular referendum a few months later. However, popular opinion was spread pretty evenly between supporters and opponents, and the result of any referendum seemed far from certain. Then came the events of the 15th of July 2016, a confused sequence of incidents amounting to what was apparently a failed coup. Despite subsequent intensive inquiries and investigations, a considerable number of questions remained unanswered, and in point of fact, they still remain unanswered. The New York Times believes that these loose ends have led to the suspicion that in order to justify the subsequent crackdown, the government may have allowed the coup to unfold, or even encouraged it. The leader of Turkey's largest opposition party, uh, Kemal Kilik Daroglu, has described what happened as a controlled coup. The attempted putsch undoubtedly gave Erdogan reason enough to institute retribution of unparalleled, unprecedented severity on those suspected of opposing the regime. More than 110,000 people have been arrested, 
including nearly 11,000 police officers, 7,500 members of the military, and 2,500 prosecutors and judges. Uh, 179 media outlets have been shut down uh, and some 2,700 journalists uh, dismissed. In April 2017, uh, the referendum on the constitutional changes uh, duly took place. Uh, but the result, a narrow 51% in favour as against 49% ag against, uh, confirmed the suspicions of those unconvinced about the nature of the coup in the previous July. Erdogan might well have lost the referendum and with it his bid for supreme power had there not been a strong reason to remove opposition voices and to rally Turkish opinion against rebels in the military uh, seeking to overthrow the government. Meanwhile, the perpetual state of emergency enables Erdogan to continue governing with virtually dictatorial powers, a situation that has met with considerable popular hostility. Last July, uh, uh, Kilik Daroglu, the leader of the opposition, led a 25-day march from Ankara to Istanbul, culminating in a huge rally to protest against the year-long post-coup crackdown. Now, one way to counter opposition at home is to uh, divert public attention to enemies abroad. Erdogan, Erdogan may have been hoping that his current foreign adventure against the Kurds in northern Syria will help disarm his critics and rally popular support in his favour. Well, thank you for listening, and do please join me again next time. Goodbye.